everybody and welcome to negative and fractional indices. Uh, just before we start, just a reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So I'm just going to begin uh, with a little question about um, indices and uh, the laws of indices. Um, how could we write n cubed divided by n to the power of 5? Well, if we wrote this out in full, um, n cubed would be n times n times n. n to the power of 5 would be n times n times n times n times n. If we wrote that out as a fraction, it would look like this. And whenever we have fractions, we can look at cancelling out common, uh, common factors from the uh, numerator and the denominator. And so this n on the top could cancel with the n on the bottom. This n could cancel with this one. And this n could cancel with this one. Now, the fact that we've uh, cancelled out everything on the top leaves us actually with just the number 1. And so what that's done is it's given us 1 over n times n, which we write as 1 over n squared. But if we think about our rules of indices, we would, uh, when we are dividing, our rule is that we just subtract the powers. So we could also say that this is just... 3 take away 5, well that's going to be n to the negative 2. Now given that both of these are exactly the same question to start with, then the two answers must be the same. And therefore, 1 over n squared is actually exactly the same as n to the power of negative 2. This is because of the general rule. Um, the general rule is that a to the power of negative b equals 1 over a to the power of positive b. If you ever see a power that is negative, it creates 1 over the original value. And so, let's see if we can put that into action with a few examples. Um, so we've got 6 to the power of negative 2. Now I should just point out here the word evaluate. Um, in a maths exam, if you see the word evaluate, it means find the value of. So we actually are looking for a numerical answer here. We don't want an answer left in index form. So we've got 6 to the power of negative 2. So straight away, the negative tells me that it's going to be 1 over. But it's going to be 1 over 6 to the power of positive 2. 1 over 6 to the power of 2, well 6 to the power of 2 is 36 because it's 6 squared and so that is 1 over 36. 3 to the power of negative 3, again the negative is telling me that it's going to be 1 over and it's going to be 3 to the power of positive 3 and so it's asking me what is 1 over 3 cubed, well 3 cubed is 27 and so it's 1 over 27. Finally, 2 to the power of negative 5. Well, straight away, that means 1 over 2 to the power of 5. Now, this one, we don't normally know our uh, powers of 5. Um, but in this case, because it's the number 2, that means I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. If we work out 2 times 2, it's 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. Times 2 again will be 32. And so that's 1 over 32. When it comes to the fractions, um, there is a, a, another little issue here. The negative, um, actually, the negative power actually flips that fraction over. So the first thing that this does, 1 over 4 to the power of negative 1, the first thing it does is it makes it 4 over 1 to the power of positive 1. Um, so we have used the negative to flip the fraction over and then uh, we've used the, uh, the power of 1. Now, the power of 1 just means exactly as it is. So that would be 4 over 1. And 4 over 1 is quite simply 4. If I've got 2 thirds to the power of negative 2, the first thing we need to deal with is the negative. The negative flips the fraction over, it becomes 3 over 2, but it's 3 over 2 squared. And so that power of 2, it acts on the numerator and denominator of the fraction. So it's 3 squared, which is 9, and 2 squared, which is 4, 9 over 4. And finally, 4 over 3 to the power of negative 3, 
Well, the first thing is the negative power. If we use that first, it will flip the fraction over. So it becomes 3 over 4. But it's 3 over 4 cubed. And 3 over 4 cubed means we need to cube the top, which is 3 cubed, 27. And cube the bottom, 4 cubed, which is 64. Okay, so um, next up, with a little bit of knowledge of square roots, we can say that root a times root a equals a. Now, if you're not sure if you believe that, well, let's have a look at root 4 times root 4. Well, what is root 4? It's 2. What is root 4? It's 2. So it'd be 2 times 2. It equals 4. And so the square root of 4 times the square root of 4 just gives us 4. Root a times root a equals a. So it is true. But if we're thinking about laws of indices, um, what power must root a be the same as? Um, so we've got something multiplied by itself giving us a. Well, if we're thinking about multiplication, that is powers being added. And so the only way that we could actually do this would be a to the power of a half times a to the power of a half. We would add the two powers together and we would get a total of one. And remember, if we see a letter on its own, that is a power of 1. And therefore, root a must be a to the power of a half. Now again, there is a general rule that goes along with this. The general rule states that a to the power of 1 over b is exactly the same as the bth root of a. So whatever number is on the bottom of this fraction, when it's 1 over becomes the root that you take. So if it was 1 over 3, we'd be taking the cube root. If it was 1 over 4, we'd be taking the fourth root, and so on. So let's see if we can put that into action. Again, we are evaluating, so we're finding the actual numerical answer. 36 to the power of a half, well, because it is a 2 on the bottom, that means we are finding the square root. Now, we don't normally write the little 2 in front of it, but just for uh, the sake of this example, let's keep it there. So that is the square root of 36. And we've just got to be very careful here. There are actually two answers to this. It's plus or minus 6. Next, we get 125 to the power of a third. The number on the bottom is a 3, which means that it is the cube root of 125. Now the cube root of 125, well what number do I cube to make 125? The answer is 5. So next, 64 to the power of a sixth, which means we're actually looking for the sixth root of 64. Now again, we're not uh, very, uh, very used to seeing um, values like this in terms of powers, um, and that is a signal that you might be thinking about the number 2. Um, if you have a think, what number do you multiply by itself, and then by itself again, and by itself again, by itself again, by itself again, to make 64? Well, it's 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 again is 64. And so the answer is actually 2. In the fractions, we are now dealing with um, 25 over 49 to the power of a half. Now again, the fraction power still does the same thing. It means I'm looking for the square root of 25 over 49. Now in this case, what that actually does, um, the square root of all of this is exactly the same. It's just saying, well, it's the square root of 25 over the square root of 49. Square rooting the numerator and denominator. And so the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 49 is 7. 64 over 27 to the power of a third. Well, that power of a third means we are dealing with the cube root of 64 over 27. And again, that cube root acts on both parts of it. So the cube root of 64 over the cube root of 27. Well, the cube root of 64 is 4. The cube root of 27 is 3. And finally, 4 over 9 to the power of negative a half. Now, this is just bringing together um, the two parts that we've looked at so far. We have a negative power. So straight away, if we see a negative power, that's going to invert the fraction. It's going to become 9 over 4. 
Now 9 over 4 to the power of a half. What effect does the power of a half have? Well, it gives us the square root. So we're finding the square root of 9 over 4. And the square root 9 over 4 means the square root of 9, which is 3, and the square root 4, which is 2. So we get 3 over 2. Okay, so the last little piece that I want to look at um, is um, if we were just dealing with laws of indices. So I've got 9 to the power of a half raised to the power of 3. Now, if we were dealing with laws of indices, the rule is that we would multiply those two together. And so 9 to the power of a half to the power of 3 is actually 9 to the power of 3 over 2. But if we break this down into what we've actually been asked to do, well, 9 to the power of a half, that is the square root of 9, and that is being raised to the power of 3. Now, how does this relate to 9 to the power of 3 over 2? Well, what we can see is the bottom number, as it has before, has told us which root to take. So we're taking the square root. The number at the end, the bit that is being multiplied, that is at the top. And so what we've actually been told here is because it's 9 to the power of 3 over 2, it means we're going to take the square root and raise it to the power of 3. So the bottom of the fraction is telling me which root to take. The top is telling me what power to raise it to. And there's our general rule. A to the power of B over C is the same as the Cth root of A raised to the power of B. And so it's telling us to take the root first and then raise it to the power that's at the top. So let's give that a go. We're evaluating again. We're finding the numerical uh, value. And so 25 to the power of 3 over 2. The bottom number first is a 2. And so it's telling me to take the square root of 25. What it's then telling me to do is to raise that to the power of 3. And so the square root of 25, well, that is 5. Raise it to the power of 3. Well, 5 cubed is 125. Next, we have 1,000 to the power of 2 over 3. Well, the first thing here is the bottom number tells me the root to take. So I want the cube root of 1,000. And I want that raising to the power of 2. What is the cube root of 1,000? Well, the cube root is 10. And I'm going to square that. And so I get... 100. I've got 16 to the power of 5 over 4. So in this case, that's telling me that I need to take the fourth root of 16 and then raise it to the power of 5. Well, what is the fourth root of 16? So what number do I times by itself, by itself and by itself again to make 16? Well, that is 2. So I've got 2 to the power of 5. What is 2 to the power of 5? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. When it comes to the fractions, I've got 100 over 49 being raised to the power of 3 over 2. And so the first thing that this is telling me is that I need to take the square root. And so just like we did in the previous ones, that means it's going to be the square root of 100 divided by the square root of 49. But all of this is going to be raised to the power of 3. So we've got the square root of 100 is 10, the square root of 49 is 7, but all of that is going to be cubed. So 10 cubed is 1,000, and 7 cubed, well that is 7 times 7 is 49, times 7 again um, is 280, um, 343, if we put that together. Um, 64 over 27 raised to the power of 2 over 3. Well, again, that is telling me that I want to take the cube root. So the cube root of 64 divided by the cube root of 27. And that's all going to be raised to the power of 2. So the cube root is 64 is 4. The cube root of 27 is 3. 
but that's all going to be squared, so that will give me 16 over 9. And finally, 1000 over 27 to the power of negative 4 over 3. Well, let's have a think about this one. We're now combining together everything we've seen so far. We have a negative power. So what is the first thing that that's going to do? Well, that is going to make it invert the fraction so that it's now 27 over 1,000 to the power of 4 over 3. Next, the 3 as the denominator. That is going to tell me to find the cube root. So the cube root of 27, the cube root of 1,000. But all of that is going to be raised to the power of 4. What is the cube root of 27? Well, that is 3. What is the cube root of 1,000? Well, that is 10. All of this raised to the power of 4. So finally, what is 3 to the power of 4? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 again is 81. And what is 10 to the power of 4? Well, that is 1 with four zeros, it's 10,000. So 81 over 10 thousand okay so the final uh, final part of today's uh, video is the exam question it came from the edexcel paper in june 2017 and it was on higher paper one um, so we're dealing here with a non-calculator question um, and we've been asked to find the value of 81 to the power of negative a half so we just need to first of all just deal with the two elements here we have a negative power so straight away, we can say that the negative power means it's going to be 1 over. So it's going to be 1 over 81 to the power of a half. And then we just need to deal with what does the power of a half mean? Well, the power of a half, um, there's, no, uh, there's a number 1 on the top. So we just need to deal with the denominator is a 2. So it's 1 over the square root of 81. What is the square root of 81? Well, the square root of 81 is 9. So we've got 1 over 9. Now, technically, this is a plus or a minus, but um, in general, we're probably going to get the marks just for a ninth here. In part B, uh, we're asked to find the value of 64 over 125 to the power of 2 thirds. So this one, we have a, a, a fractional index um, and we have a root in terms of the 3 and a power to raise it to in terms of the two. So what we're dealing with here is we're gonna get the cube root of 64 divided by the cube root of 125, and then all of that is gonna be raised to the power of two. So what is the cube root of 64? Well, the cube root is four. What is the cube root of 125? Well, that is five, and all of that is going to be squared. What is 4 squared? It is 16. What's 5 squared? It's 25. And so our answer is just 16 over 25.